In this video, I'm just going to tell you everything I've learned from 15 years of hustling, grinding, trying to make money so that you can avoid a lot of the mistakes and just a lot of the pitfalls and mindsets that I fell into over the years. Ultimately, I built a junk removal company that started with just me and a truck, and today we're in over 40 cities nationwide. These seven takeaways are what I would tell every single entrepreneur that I talk to, every young entrepreneur or someone just starting a business. These are the things that I would tell them so that they could be successful. So key takeaway number one, from the beginning, you need to know how you're going to sell whatever it is that you are creating, whether it's a product or a service. Come up with your idea, but also before you start, know exactly your plan of attack on how you're going to get customers and how you're going to sell that product. All the businesses that I've started where I knew how I was going to sell that product or service before I even started were successful. I started a deodorant company in college and I had no idea how I was going to get customers. I just knew that I was going to make a natural deodorant and that there wasn't a lot of natural deodorants on the market, but I had no idea how to sell that deodorant. I made a website and I was surprised when no one was buying it. I thought I'd be on Safeway shelves selling deodorant within a year. I quickly found that getting on Safeway shelves isn't as easy as just walking into the store and telling them about your product. It takes a lot of money, a lot of time, a lot of proof of concept before you can even get into those stores. I went into it with just an idea and not an actual execution plan of how I would sell that product. With my e-commerce store that I have now, I knew how to do SEO and have my pages ranked. So I knew that I would sell my product through SEO and ranking for those low competition keywords. And in the first year, we did $300,000 in sales of that e-commerce product because I knew how I was going to sell that product from the beginning. If you're doing a service business, how are you going to get customers? Are you going to go out and hand out a bunch of flyers? Are you going to start out with ads? Are you going to get a Google business listing and get a bunch of reviews locally and build up your reputation in one small town? Now you can always pivot down the road, but have a plan of attack from the beginning it's going to give you a lot more confidence launching that business, and it's just going to get you off on the right foot. So come up with your idea, but also before you start, know exactly your plan of attack on how you're going to get customers and how you're going to sell that product. Now, number two is riches are in the niches, especially when starting out. When you're starting out, niching down and focusing on one specific area can really set you apart, lets you rank easier, and lets people find you because you're focusing on that specific service. So if you're doing a cleaning business and decide to focus specifically on Airbnb cleaning, then people who have Airbnbs see your business and know that you focus on that specific thing. It's setting you apart from all the other cleaning businesses. You can always expand down the road and a specific niche could just be focusing on one town, one small city and dominating that city, getting a ton of reviews, handing out flyers in that town and spreading word of mouth there. And then you can expand down the road. I found that businesses where I start, I spoke focus on a specific niche from the beginning, find traction a lot easier than trying to compete against the, a bunch of the other more general businesses out there. You're more likely to connect with a customer meeting their exact needs. And by niching down, you're meeting their exact needs more than most of the general companies out there. So riches are in the niches when you're first starting out. Now, the number three key takeaway is just start. Don't spend too much time just watching videos and never start it. Don't focus on every little reason why you shouldn't start and just start. I see a lot of people trying to figure out every specific detail detail of the business before they even start. If you're going to start a lawn care company, just start handing out flyers, post on your local Facebook page and tell people that you'll mow their lawns. Maybe you don't even have a website yet, but just start. Once you have customers and money coming in, you get that momentum. You can always build systems and websites and everything and grow along the way. But the most important thing and the thing that most people never do is just start. I understand it can be scary to start something new. You're worried it might not work out. You're worried what people might think. You're worried that you might let your customers down. I get it. But you can even just start with friends, with family. So even if you offer them for free and start getting some reviews. I have a friend, he decided one day that he wanted to start a handyman business. He left his job and posted on his local Facebook community page the next day saying, hey, I left my job. I want to be a handyman. Please let me know if there's anything I can do for you. He started with extremely low prices just to get customers and get word of mouth growing. He now makes multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. He still doesn't even have a website, but he has a real business. He's making money and he no longer has the job that he hated. So just start. Whatever that looks like for you, just start. Starting is going to get you the momentum you need. It's going to teach you things. You're going to learn things. Even if the business doesn't work out, I've learned a lot from every failed business I've had. Maybe you don't 
even have an LLC set up or anything yet, but you can go out and start picking up a few people's junk. And then after you see that it's working, you can get all those things put in place. A couple years down the road, you'll be so glad that you started when you did. Now, number four is focus on one thing and do that great. So when you have an idea, you've decided what business you want to start, focus on that 100% and do that great. Don't let all the things, all the shiny objects and new business models popping up get you to do something else. Just focus on that one thing. Keep doing that day in and day out. One trick that I've found, if you're looking to start something, put a hundred minute chunk every day or something that's doable for you. So maybe it's 30 minutes every day, or maybe it's 10 minutes every day, but block out a time on every single day to work on that one specific thing. Maybe it's first thing in the morning. It's the most important thing of the day for you. And you take 20 minutes and you work on that. If you do that every single day for months and months and a year, if you spent time every single day on one specific focused thing, you're going to see that you're moving the needle like crazy. So if it's a service business, maybe you're spending 30 minutes every day trying to find new customers. Maybe you're spending an hour every day writing articles on your website. Whatever it is, find one task, one focused task that is going to help move the needle for your business and do that every single day. And don't try to be too ambitious and do like five hours a day on this one thing. You might do that for a week, two weeks, a month, but it's not going to last. Figure out something that's extremely doable for you that in the beginning, seems easy. 30 minutes working on that maybe seems easy, but then you're going to be able to stick with it every single day. That compounds like crazy. When you have done that for months and months and months, you're going to see so much return from all that time that you're spending. And it's a lot better than just spending one day where you do eight hours of work and then you're exhausted and you don't work for a few days. Then you do another crazy day. You don't work for a few days. Just figure out chunks that you can do every single day that are doable and you will see that your business can really grow with that method that's worked for me so definitely give it a try but once you decide what you're going to do just focus on that and do it every single day number five is never put all your eggs in one basket and what i mean by this is don't just focus on one platform i have a great story here on amazon fba i started an amazon fba business and i had found out about that business model and how you could put a product on amazon with low competition and build reviews and get some organic sales coming in and amazon took care of everything Thing for you. So I put all my eggs into the Amazon basket. I built a product and started selling on Amazon. I didn't have any sales coming in through my website on Google. I didn't have an email list. I didn't have anything else. So when Amazon changed their rules, they came up with new certifications that I needed for that product and they delisted me overnight. I had to go get new certifications for the product, which was going to cost me thousands of dollars and also months of time. By the time that I was able to relist my product, a ton of other competitors had come in. A lot of the other competitors had already built up a lot more reviews and it was really hard to get more traction. So I put all my eggs into the Amazon basket and when Amazon changed their rules, I was out of luck. The same thing happened with an affiliate site that I bought. I saw an affiliate site for sale in a great niche that I saw that I could add some value to and I bought it. And the whole site, it was just focused on Google SEO and ranking at the top of Google. It didn't have any traffic from ads, any traffic from Pinterest, anywhere else, just Google. So I bought the site within two months. There was a Google update and the site went to zero. I paid $80,000 for that site and a couple months after I bought it, it had no traffic coming in. Looking back, I probably should have bought a site that was more diversified, that had traffic coming from a bunch of different sources and wasn't just focused on Google SEO. So if you're building a business, maybe in the beginning, you're focused on just one platform, but have a plan for other platforms or other sources of revenue. So if you're doing a service business, maybe you have customers coming in through SEO, you have customers coming coming in through some flyers you're handing out. Maybe you have Google ads, some recurring business from commercial clients, but just have different sources of revenue so that if one goes away, your business isn't completely shut down because it was reliant on one single area. Now, number six is about growth. So to grow any business, what you need is you need a single source of revenue that you can replicate over and over and over again. So if this is a service business, maybe you have Google ads that you figure out and are profitable in a single area. And then when you go in into a new location, you can take that strategy of Google ads and put it into the new location. You know that in San Diego, if you put a dollar into Google ads, you're getting $2 out. Then you go over to Denver, you put a dollar into Google ads, you do the same strategy, you know you're getting $2 out. You can expand into multiple cities. Maybe you're doing flyers in a single area for a lawn care company. You know that if you hand out 100 flyers, you get 10 customers. Then you can expand and start doing more and more
more flyers because you know those flyers are working, you know they're giving you a positive return. So whatever it is, figure out a system in place and how you're gonna make revenue in a single area and then expand that area. But the best way and most reliable way to grow to figure out how you're getting revenue and then replicate that in a bunch of different areas with junk removal i did this i figured out how to get traffic in a single area and once it was working in that area i did the same thing on my website in other locations and was able to expand into a lot of different cities because i used that same model that i had already figured out in one city and used it in a lot of different cities if you don't have a way that you're making money that can be replicated or expanded upon it's going to be really tough for you to grow maybe with a e-commerce product, this is Facebook ads. And you spend a lot of time figuring out your Facebook ads, figuring out how you can get a profitable return. And then you know, if you put $10 in, end up getting $30 out. What you ultimately want is a machine that you can build where you put a certain amount of money in and you're getting more money out. Then all you have to do is just put more and more money in and you're getting more and more money out. Also, another big takeaway from growth is that it's extremely hard to grow alone. What you want to do is bring people in who can take some of the work off your plate. And it's scary at first, but a lot of those people, if you find for specific jobs, are going to be better at that job than you were trying to do 20 jobs. With my junk removal company, it used to just be me in a truck picking up junk. And I grew to a certain point where I was making six figures a year, but I was doing all the work. And I wasn't focusing on going to new areas. I could only handle so many customers. I was answering all the phones. So a lot of customers were falling through the cracks because I wasn't answering. I didn't have a good way for them to book with me. But as I started hiring people right off the bat, I made a little less money. But then within a few months, we started to grow and I started to expand. And that's how I was able to go into a lot of different areas. I ended up realizing that when jobs came in, I could just send them out to contractors who were already in the junk removal space. They could just go do those jobs for me. And I found contractors in a lot of different cities. And all I had to do was get the business in those cities and send them out to those contractors. And so then I could just focus on growing the business and getting customers in a lot of cities and I was sending the actual labor out to other people to do that work. Then I found someone to answer phones and I found a streamlined way to have people book online. Every piece of the business that I took away from me and had someone else do helped the business grow. That is true for pretty much every business. So as soon as you can start taking work off your plate, having people help you out and that's how you're going to be able to grow beyond just yourself. Now number seven is if you really want to be an entrepreneur, it isn't a matter of if, it's a matter of of when. There's a quote that I love, people grossly overestimate what they can do in 10 months, but drastically underestimate what they can do in 10 years. So things compound over time. I spent years and years and years of failure before something worked out, but I always knew that entrepreneurship was really the only path for me. I didn't want to go work for somebody else. I didn't feel like I could work for somebody else. And so I always was trying something. There's going to be a lot of ups and downs when things are working. It's great. But when things are down and not good, it can be really tough especially as an entrepreneur, when it's just you alone, it's very easy to want to give up, but I could never not be an entrepreneur. That's why after every failure, I decided that I was going to try something else. If something doesn't work out, if you have a failure, let yourself be bummed about it for a little bit and come back and figure out a new plan moving forward and how you're going to get back into it. Luck compounds over time. So you hear a lot of entrepreneurs say it was hard work and a lot of luck, but you might not be lucky on the first business you try or the second business or the first source of customers that you try. Maybe flyers don't work out in your town, but then you find that Google ads start working for you. Eventually, you're going to get a lucky break here and there. It took me 10 plus years before something really started to work out for me and catch on. And I got a few lucky breaks in there. That luck wouldn't have happened if I hadn't tried a whole bunch of different businesses before. You learn from those businesses. And if you try enough times, you keep coming back. Eventually, luck is going to be on your side. The junk removal company I have now, I started at the beginning as a side way to make money while I was trying to start my other businesses. I always saw the junk removal business as kind of a side business. And I was running that and trying all these other businesses. Then I got a couple lucky breaks with the junk removal business and it started growing. I had it long enough where I got more and more lucky breaks and that business became my main business after a while. So you never know what it's going to be, but if you keep trying, if you keep coming back, eventually something is going to work. So these are my seven key takeaways from 15 years of hustling, trying to make money. When I started back 
15 years ago. These are the things, these are the seven takeaways that I wish I had known that I think that would have really helped me streamline this process and avoid a lot of the pitfalls and failures that I came across. So I hope you guys found it helpful. I hope that at least you found a couple nuggets that you can take away when starting your business or growing your business. Let me know your thoughts down below. I really appreciate you guys watching. All your comments and feedback really keep me going and making these videos. So if you like this, please let me know, like, and subscribe if you haven't already, and see you in the next one.